Hi, and welcome to a little drive around southern Cyprus as part of our winter break with Jet 2 holidays. We'll have some hints and tips and take a look at different aspects of driving in Cyprus. I suppose we should introduce you to our chariot, Martin. Taken from the letters on the number plate, you'll also notice that the license plate background is red. That's because it's a hire car. We'll start by leaving our accommodation, the Olympic Lagoon Resort. You can catch our video on that at the end. As Cyprus was under British administration at the turn of the 20th century, you will notice that we drive on the left in right-hand drive cars. Distances and speed limits are in kilometres and kilometres per hour. Now this is a personal opinion, but I found driving in Cyprus really easy. Where the other road is to be considerate and navigating simple. You'll find the signposts are in Greek and English, and as I said, distances in kilometres. We're here in winter, mid to late February, on a winter sunbreak with Jet 2 holidays. So I guess the roads are quieter than peak season. We are based in Pathos, in the southwest of Cyprus, and none of the distances you will cover will be that far. To the capital Nicosia, it's 150 kilometres on the A roads, that's 95 miles. Or to Ayanapa in the east, 180 kilometres or 110 miles. Both can be reached in around two hours. In this video, I want to cover the four major road types. They are A and B, and E and F. I have no idea what happened to C and D. If you're a Cypriot, you can let me know. We'll also look at the speed limits. The distances may not be great, but you'll be getting there at a leisurely pace. That's okay, you're on your holidays. So the first road type we'll look at is the A road. The A6 to be precise. That runs from Pathos to Limassol some 59 kilometers later, where it morphs into the A1. It also includes a tunnel, but other than that it's a straightforward dual carriageway with a 100 km per hour speed limit. That's the max for the island, although I'm not sure everyone's speedo is calibrated the same. The reason this route may interest you is that it runs past Aphrodite's rock. Well, you have to join the B6, but it's clearly signposted, and there's free parking when you get there. There's also another couple of viewpoints along the coast, but for now, let's just take a look at this must-see site in southern Cyprus. Legend has it the Greek goddess Aphrodite was born here, and anyone who swims around it will be blessed with eternal beauty. I guess I arrived too late in life. We'll take one last look at Aphrodite's rock as we head to somewhere a little less peaceful. Our next destination is to head into Pathos Old Town and I'm expecting things to get a little busier. However, as someone who drove into Canary Wharf in London for 18 years, I think I can handle a little traffic. But as you can see, as we head towards Pathos Old Town, it's hardly bumper to bumper traffic on this Tuesday morning. All you have to do is keep an eye out for other tourists. To be fair, we could have made this journey by bus from our resort. Speaking to other guests, they were quick, clean and reasonably priced. But we had our car and we planned to head on to explore more of Cyprus afterwards. So we thought, why not? And now a bit of a confession. I don't normally drive a manual or stick shift. And for many years, my cars have had a little bit more rumpf than Martin. So I'm glad we made a clean getaway there, but that was not always the case. However, not once did the car behind become irate or sound the horn. They just seemed more relaxed here in Cyprus. Anyway, as we head to the car park in town, I'm just going to speed up the action a little. I don't want you to think I've thrown caution to the wind.
So our car park is here to the right, and for the life of me I can't remember the cost, but it would have been minimal, say around a euro. We had a look around Pathos in our video exploring Pathos, which I'll pop up at the end, so I'll just give you a snippet now. It's a great little place to wander around and perhaps discover Pathos, new and old. I think it's about time to introduce you to the E and F roads. Actually, there are many styles to each, so buckle up. As I mentioned, this was a winter sunbreak with Jet 2 holidays, but nobody can guarantee the sun. We could have sat in comfort at the all inclusive Olympic Lagoon Resort and be waited on, fed and watered, but why would we want that? We wanted to discover more of Cyprus. And back to road classifications. We're on the E701 and we're heading off towards Coral Bay. I think anyone who is used to driving on the left is going to find it easy to drive in Cyprus. And if you happen to normally drive on the right, this is a great introduction to driving on the other side. We're heading north northwest on the western edge of Cyprus. We found it reasonably easy to park up, although in the height of summer, I expect it's a different story. Now let's take a look at Coral Bay. I suspect under beautiful blue skies it would look a lot better. As we continue further north, our next destination looks interesting. We're off to see a shipwreck. This is where I need Janice and her expert navigation skills. There's no signpost for the wreck of the Edro III, which ran aground on the 8th of October 2011. When we get to the end of the lane, let's park up and take a look around. It's a pretty little bay that has a surprise. I never knew the shipwreck was going to be that close. Heading up into the hills, we turn off onto an F road, the F734 to be precise. And to be fair, this doesn't look much different from the B road we just left. We've opted to take a cross country route, picking up a couple of villages as we do so. The landscape is fabulous, and I think it's time to hit the fast forward button again and allow you to enjoy the ride. And now to slow down, as I head through the first village, and I guess it's the real side of rural Cyprus. It's so quiet up here. Now navigator, which way to head? Actually, it doesn't really matter, so long as it's in the general direction of Paphos. I'm enjoying this drive. And if you are too, please give us a like, it really helps. And if you like my style of videos, then why not subscribe as we travel around places we love, exploring new destinations along the way. We're heading towards the little village of Kathgis, which shouldn't be too far away. We're certainly gaining some height as we make our way towards it. I think we just need to cross the E711 and we should be there. And I think this is it. We just need to make our way towards the centre. We noticed a sign for free parking, so that's an invite to stop and have a look around. 
This sleepy little village has, according to Wiki, a population of less than 350. And the region is known for its wine production. So slightly surprised to see a gin bar. According to Janice, that's not a bad thing. But we're driving, so we give it a miss. Plus, I need a navigator to make it back to the resort. Even in a quiet little place like this, there are four or five different places to grab a bite to eat. And hopefully the sun is starting to try and break through. After a little leg stretch, it's time to get back on the road again. And we're heading to the coast, which is only about 8 miles or 12.5 kilometres away. As you can see, the distances here are short. But the speed limits are low, so trips may take a little longer than expected. On the subject of speed limits, I think there is a certain level of tolerance for bending those limits. However, I chose to stick to them, and I think we passed two speed check zones during our three days on the road. Is that sea before me and breaks in the cloud cover? I think as we descend towards the Mediterranean, I'll leave you in a little piece. So a quick right turn and we're heading towards Lara Bay, not to be confused with Lara Beach or Turtle Beach. Lara Beach is where the green and loggerhead turtles come to lay their eggs between May to August. These wonderful little creatures then hatch around 50 days later. As we're on a winter break there's no chance of us seeing them, but the landscape is beautiful nonetheless. According to Google Maps, I'm now at Lara Bay, so let's pull over and take a look. What a fabulous view, and so peaceful. It looks like there's more to explore further up the coast. So let's jump in the car and head up there. When I hired the car from six, which I did through rentalcars.com. I remember the agent telling me the car was not to be taken off road. I smiled and said, no, of course not. I thought, why would I do that? Well, my tarmac has disappeared. Am I off road? In my defense, my lad, I was not off road, merely taking an unmade road. I rest my case. Now my focus is on dodging the potholes, keeping the speed down to avoid throwing up rocks and creating a dust trail. I believe we have now entered the Arkhamus Conservation Area on the Arkhamus Peninsula. I'm just going to head down here a little further to find somewhere sensible to park safely at the edge of the road. If I wanted to head to Lara Beach, then I would need to head further up here, and I'm sure that would include some off-roading. I think I've found my spot, so let's jump out and take a look around. This unspoiled area looks just perfect.
as lovely as the view is, we need to head on. We just need to keep an eye out for those pesky potholes. I have one last thing I want to show you, and I do need to head inland again. With a clear view of the road ahead, let's make our way past this tractor. You remember that conversation with Six about off-road driving? Well, I have another example which I don't believe was my fault either. Stick with me and let me know your thoughts in the comments. We were heading towards a village called Nicolia and passing through on a little voyage of discovery. Now the tarmac could have done with a little attention, but nothing to worry me, right? So onwards we travelled, following my dutiful navigator, and things seemed to improve. Along here, we just need to take a right. Still, looks okay. Although getting a little narrow now, but we can manage that. There's no warning signs to worry about. The road surface does seem to have got a little worse, but still, no problem. We're going to drop down this valley, cross a little river, and climb up the other side. Simples. So now we come to the bridge. A little warning sign, don't cross in higher water. To be honest, I can't really see any water. And over we go safely. And there's the trickle that is the river. Um, hang on a second, you missed a bit. Again, I would like to say I'm not off-roading. It just seems like it as the car trundles over the rocky surface. Now despite these minor escapades, the handbag procedure to six was beyond simple. All we had to do was park the car at the Olympic Lagoon Resort and leave the keys of reception for collection. As a matter of course, I took pictures of the car from all angles in case of a dispute. I didn't expect any problems after our experiences with Etta on our journey around Iceland, but still it's best to be safe. And of course, there were no problems. As I mentioned, we use rentalcars.com to explore the options in Bathos, and our experience was seamless. There's our affiliate link in the description if you want to use that option. It doesn't cost you any more, but you know that. I know I've taken enough of your time, but one last village, I promise. Kukla, just around five miles or nine kilometers from Aphrodite's Rock. So now, back to our accommodation, and it's time to thank you for your patience and support. I hope you like what we put together here. A final test for you. What was the name we gave our hire car? Drop it in the comments below, it'll make me smile. So I'll close by saying thanks again, happy and safe travels, and here's to next time.